Welcome to our weekly moment of meditation. It's good to be here today to share from the precious word of God. Father, bless this word. Allow it to sink deep in the depths of our hearts and help us to grow in grace and the knowledge of you. That we might study the Bible to get to know the Bible, but more importantly, that we might get to know you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Meet me in the Gospel of John, John chapter 10, in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Familiar landscape, it says, the thief cometh not but to rob, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. We know every Christian, every blood-bought, born-again believer that's been birthed into the body of Christ has an enemy. First, we have ourselves, the enemy and the enemy, my sinful flesh. And then we have the world, this cosmos, this eon in which we live in. And then we have the devil, Satan, Beelzebub, the prince of the power of the air, whatever you want to call him, old Slewfoot, somebody called him. And he comes to rob, to kill, and to destroy. He can't steal your salvation because the Bible says once you're saved, uh, he gives unto us, John 10, 28, eternal life. It's a gift from God. They shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck you out of his hand. The son is in the father's hand. The father, nobody's big enough or bad enough to pluck us out of his hand. But he comes to rob, to kill. And we don't let him steal his joy. Some writer said, don't let the devil steal your joy. He doesn't steal your joy. We give it to him. No, no, he can't steal your joy. You have to surrender it to him. Uh, John 16, 24, he says, up until now you ask nothing in my name. Ask and receive that your joy might be made full. He's interested in keeping our joy barometer on full, overflowing, pressed down, shaken together and running over that others might be able to be blessed by our spiritual deportment. You see, beloved, he said, the thief comes out to rob, kill, and destroy, but there's that consecrated conjunction. He says, but I have come. Why has it come? That we might have life. The Greek word is zoe, that we might enjoy life to the fullest measure. And it's only in Jesus. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 11, he said, man, verse 4, he says, man can't live by bread alone. The spiritual, the physical, and the spiritual counterpart cries out for that which is spiritual. But every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You know, beloved, as kingdom citizens, we got some marvelous benefits. There's a great benefit package. I mean, on our jobs, we got benefit packages and uh, insurance, life insurance, health insurance, disability insurance, long-term care, retirement plan. Well, this is, a, this is a benefit package that can't be beat. And three things I'm going to say that he includes for all of us as kingdom citizens. If you're a kingdom citizen, that means that you allow the rule of reign of God in your life and you allow the kingdom principles, the biblical mandates uh, and measures of the master, the principles and precepts of the prince of peace. You allow them to guide your life. That's what a kingdom citizen does. Allows him to rule and to reign and be Lord, be the boss in our lives. First of all, uh, he gives us some marvelous practices. Uh, number one, the Bible talks about Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Uh, he, Paul pleads with the Rome, the church at Rome. He said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your body, your summa, a living sacrifice. In other words, that means you got the dead die. A sacrifice dies. In other words, uh, he said, Matthew 16, 24, any man come after me, he got to deny himself. Take up this cross. The cross is a vehicle of redemption and follow me if you lose your life for my sake in the kingdom then you find it you seek to gain life then you lose it the missionary said you got to be willing to give up that which you cannot keep in order to gain that which you cannot lose he said i, I beseech you brethren by the mercies of god give your body surrender your mind will and emotions a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god Bible said, 1 Peter 1, 16, without holiness, shall be holy because I am holy. He said, without holiness, no man can please God. He says, 
Um, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you might present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. Because we got something to prove. We want to demonstrate that God's will is good. It's acceptable. It's perfect. It's complete. You want to be godly testimonies that this scripture works when you allow it to come into your life. You see, beloved, we have marvelous practices that give great benefits. James chapter 1, verse 21 and 25, he talks about, verse 22 rather, he talks about not just being a hearer of the word, an auditor of the word, because many of us audit the Bible. I don't like that, when he, this one he says. I don't like that. We, we cut out pieces of the Bible that we don't like. He said, don't be a hearer of the word and not a doer. And if we do that, we're just fooling ourselves. You're deceiving yourself. A pretending practitioner making promises without performance. He said, but blessed, verse 25, uh, favor, divinely bestowed favor is upon the man, the woman, the boy, the girl that not only hears the word of God, but heeds the word of God, but puts it to practice. Allow the spirit of God to allow the word of God to come to fruition in our daily lives. It's a marvelous practice. And, and the Bible said the benefit of that is you'll be blessed. If you hear and do, you'll be blessed. Faith. And whatever you do, the Bible says you'll prosper. You'll have good success. You want to know the secret to success? Do what God says. I can't do it on my own. I need some help. That's why he gives us Holy Ghost. He says, I give you marvelous practices. Number two, I give you some memorable promises. There are some promises to help us with the practice. He said, at, at Acts 1, 8, he says, you'll receive power. Deuteronomy's power. Dynamite underneath this gift that you might be my witnesses martyrs the Greek word is martyon in other words when you serve in this Christian life there's going to be some suffering there's going to be some suffering some pain but 1 Peter 4 12 says don't think it's strange when you fall in these fiery testings temptations that are to try you to make you strong that you might be able to last long Many people that talk about, I want, I want patience. Well, uh, I, I'm praying for patience, but Pastor, Romans, that's a dangerous prayer because Romans 5, 3 says, tribulation worketh patience. Trouble. How are you going to get patience if you don't get in a situation that's going to require it? God's going to allow you to get in a situation where you can call on him and see that he can give you patience. He can give you long suffering, the ability to suffer for a long time. He'll give you power. Matter of fact, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4 said he's given us everything we need that to live godly. Matter of fact, if, if, for me to live as Christ, Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, to die, I'll be with Christ. Anywhere I go, I win. If I suffer down here, Romans 8, 18 says, the sufferings of this time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed to us. We know we're going to have trouble in this world, but the promise is, but be of good cheer. Because we know somebody. He dwells inside of us in the person of the Holy Ghost, the third person of the triunity, of the trinity. He dwells in us that we might be able to, he's already overcome. You're overcomers. First John chapter 5, 4. You're overcomers in Christ. Pray to you see. First John 4, 4. And in you, the Holy Ghost in you is greater than he that is in the world. He gives you marvelous practices that you can perform by memorable performances, but then he gives you the master's provision. Hallelujah. He said, whatever you lack, ask. Matthew 7, 7, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. To him that asketh, receive it. To him that seeketh, find it. To him that knocketh, the door shall be opened. You know, we, we are naughty by nature. We know how to give good gifts to our children. How much more? Well, our Heavenly Father, take care of our needs. Our children don't even think about where their next meal's coming from, or what, what they're going to wear, or where they're going to sleep. Uh, my kids had their own room. I, I slept with two other people. Never had my own room until I got to, to be a teenager. But they don't, they don't even think about it. If we know how to take care of our children, and we are still... Uh, uh, working it out with fear and trembling. How much more would Almighty God take care of us? Matter of fact, beloved, that's why I talked about Sunday. We don't have to worry because he already knows. Matthew 6, 30, 32. He already knows what you have need of even before you ask. He knows the provision is already on the way. He takes care of our needs in the past. 
Hasn't God been faithful to you in the past? He's taking care of you right now. Even though you might not feel it, might not see it, might not understand it, you still live it. The blood is still running warm in your veins. And one way to deal with this depression is to begin to count your blessings. We sing the song in church. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what the Lord has done. Food on my table. Clothes on my back. A roof over my head. Thank God for what you do have. Rather than complain about what you don't have, serve somebody else. The Bible says uh, he didn't call us uh, to be served. He called us to serve and take your mind off of your own problems. You, you think about it, beloved. Uh, I didn't think I had, I had a big problem until uh, I had an ingrown toenail. Tell me the man that didn't have a foot. That didn't have a foot. Hallelujah. But he will take care of you. Not only in the past, but he's taking care of you right now. And he will take care of you in the future. Because it won't be long, as Andre said, and then we're going to be leaving here. The trump is getting ready to sound. You can read the book of Revelation and read the newspaper. You see events lining up. The Bible said, I don't want you to be ignorant about this thing. I don't want you to be out of the know. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But a trump that's going to, the dead in Christ. We're mourning a lot of our loved ones that we loved and friends have gone on to glory. But we're going to see them again uh, on that great get in the morning. They're going to get up first and then we're alive and remain. We'll be caught up, Raphael on the lantern, to meet him in the air. Be comforted. First Thessalonians 4.18. Be comforted. Let it come alongside. Paracleto in the Greek. Let it come alongside and help you to make it by these words. God bless you. Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for this brief, bold, but believing, meditative moment that we might be encouraged to run on, not to see what the end is going to be. We already know because you've revealed it to us in 66 books in the Word of God. Thank you, Lord God, for your people. Thank you for them today. We ask you to give them your peace and provide and protect as only you can. For your word says, the Lord is my keeper. God, help us to hold on to your hand, to your unchanging hand. And as the human knowledge said, build our hopes on things eternal. Hold to your unchanging hand. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for this meditative moment, listening today. Go to our website. You can find more sermons and meditative moments www.nazarenebc.org continue to pray with us and pray for us and pray for your friends, your family your flock and your foes and if you want to give the opportunity to give on the website or send us a drop us an offering in the mail to support the ministry God bless you P.O. Box 38397 Nazarene Baptist Church Philadelphia, Pennsylvania 19140 and so God should so move on your heart thank you for being with us today we are praying for you we are praying for you. Amen.